Claude Diamond is in the house and Claude just joined us. And uh, it's good to see you, Claude. Good to see you, man. I, it's been too long. I, I was just talking with Gavin, uh, texting with Gavin the other day. Oh, really? A little bit. Yeah. Yeah. How's your, how's your business, man? It's been good. It's been, um, uh, you know, things slowed down for me in the, the fall and winter a little bit. I just think, you know, the, the election, COVID, uncertainty, things going, people going crazy. Um, but things are picking up again. And we, we did a, we, I, in a couple, three months ago, we did a uh, virtual, we did a lease option deal in a small little town of Nebraska of like three or 4,000 people a sandwich lease option deal. And uh, we, we've been flipping a lot of rural vacant land, you know, similar to what Henry Serrano does a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Just uh, vacant lots in the middle of nowhere. Um, well, not Colorado, Oregon, North Carolina, and Texas. And my boys, my 15, 17 year old boys have been helping out with that. Your boy, wait a second. They can't be 15 and 17. They were, they were little guys last yeah. week. <laughs> I remember the older ones aren't little anymore. The, what you, how many my, kids you got now? Eight, nine, 22, 10? 22 kids. 22 you got kids. your own orphanage. Cheers. I, uh, yeah. So, but yeah, we, uh, my daughters are 12 and 10 now. That's great. I'm trying to remember the last time we saw you was in Colorado winter park. That must've been six years ago, five, six years ago. Yeah. 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 How's business been for you? You know, th thank you, Lord. Um, I am so grateful. Uh, I, Claudia and I, my wife, isn't that a nice name? We talk about this every day. Uh, you know, we've been here in Colorado during the COVID thing. And um, our, we're having, a business is great, but, and I know a lot of people are hurting right now and it's, it's difficult times and everything. This uh, 2020, was one of the best years. I still don't know the reason why. 2020 was one of our best years because yeah. we're like you. We've always used the media, Skype, um, uh, Zoom. We, we've always been good. You're a great communicator. I tell people, why don't you do what Joe's doing? He's on podcasts. He does Zooms. You have no, you love to tell your story and that attracts people. That's just good common sense marketing. And I do the same thing. And people call me up, nice people. We talk, they're warm calls, you know, which we all love. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and for sure. This business has been great. Uh, March is going to be the best March financially we've had in 15 years. Wow, good for you. Um, and I talk to people, I make offers every day, the rule of five, right? Um, Claude, I talk about the rule of five for so long. If anybody on this call too has heard me talk about talk to five sellers. It's this guy who I learned that from. Um, it's so important. You know, people, this is the million dollar skill and yeah. uh, this phone it's, you know, it's a thousand bucks, you know, but like it's the best investment you'll ever make. Right? <laughs> that in a three minute time, uh, you know, it's, it's really, we're in a people I, I've always taking this as a people to people business. Mm -hmm. Can I be their doctor? What's your problem? Buying, selling, investing. What's your biggest problem? I don't give a corny uh, intellectual facts and figure presentation. I just say, what are you looking to do? Why are we talking today? What's your biggest challenge? Uh, what's your problem? And I, I want to get them talking and I take How copious can I help notes. You? Can I help you? The, the most dangerous client. How can I help you today? Why are we talking? And they will start, sh if they feel like, you're not there for some other devious purpose. They will give you everything you need yeah. to give, to let you know how to sell them. Yeah. And all I do, same thing you do. I talk to nice people all every day. I talk to really nice people and um, I make offers every day. A lot of people say no every now and then one or two people say yes. And I run upstairs to Mrs. Diamond, honey, we can, we're going to have Mac and cheese tonight, you know, <laughs> And it, it's, I love it. You know, what's the funny thing? I, I still, let me ask you this, Joe. Don't you love this business? Are you, am I crazy or are we, I mean, I love this business. I, you know, I've taken it for granted, I would say too, because, you know, for years since 2009, I've worked from home. And uh, when COVID happened, I remember talking to so many people who were like, yeah, I have to work from home. 
and then they love it and they just are depressed now because they're hearing rumors that they're going to have to start going back into the office. <laughs> and uh, I just can't imagine being in a place where I had to work in a cubic hell again. I mean, that I've told the story before, like my, I was looking for an office because I thought maybe I need to work out of the house, you know, and then a friend of mine had a soft, has a software company and he had some extra offices and I went to his office to see if I could lease some space from him, right? Well, all of the nice offices with doors and windows were already filled. He had some, some empty cubicles in the middle of this big room. And I looked at the room and I literally felt sick to my stomach. I felt like I was going to throw up. I was like, I could never, ever, unless God came from heaven and spoke to me <laughs> audibly, and I heard his voice saying, you shall work in a cubicle or else I'm going to you know, just do it. And, and so then I would, right? But like, oh, I'm not trying to knock anybody who is working in a cubicle listening to this right now. But once you get a, a, the, the flavor of the freedom, the taste of the freedom, and uh, getting paid to do what you love, getting paid to, to do deals and to help people, it's pretty amazing. And, I remember uh, the, you, know, you, you left a corporate job or something, a technical job, right? Yeah, I was a civil engineer for a large engineering company building power plants. And they, I traveled a lot. If I, didn't, if I wasn't in my cubicle in the office, I was in a cubicle in a job site trailer, uh, which is better than an office. But, oh, oh I, just, I just think about it and I get depressed. I don't know. It's just not for me. And I think a lot of people here listening to this, it's not for you either. Or maybe it's not a big deal, but like, yeah, don't, yeah. here's my advice to people is don't give up on your dreams. Don't think like you could never have do what you love or never have a job that pays you extremely well. Like that's ridiculous. Yes, you can. Right. Exactly. I look back, I work from, I'm a home buddy. I love working from home of uh, cleaner bathrooms and, and better coffee and herbal tea. Okay. Yes. Bathroom's uh, much cleaner here. I don't have to commute anywhere. I've had those jobs, fortune mm -hmm. 500 companies, and I have to commute. I have to put on the suit and tie. I've got to take orders from someone else because they're giving me a paycheck. Um, and the ability to work from home, if I want to take a nap, I can, if I want to, um, if I can't sleep and I want to go downstairs to work, I can. And the freedom to uh, and you you i always tell the story about you you and the, and the family went to prague for what six months or something i mean uh, you well, went to you you disappeared yeah. into europe where's joe he's in he's in prague <laughs> <laughs> we uh yeah we did that twice went to prague with my wife and four kids for two to three months at a time each time we went for two or three months and and did my business from there and then we also did a rv trip for three months Here's the thing, whether when you're doing deals, um, all you need is this phone. We keep on talking about it. This is all you need. And you, if this works, it, you know, at, at Grand Canyon National Park, Yosemite, that phone works in Prague, in Vienna, in Paris, in Ireland, like it works anywhere from around the world. And one of the cool things about traveling is you're forcing yourself to be super efficient with your time because of the time zone differences or because, you know, you don't want to be working eight hours while your family is at this beautiful national park on a lake overlooking the mountains in Wyoming. You don't want to be working eight hours. So like it forces you, you have a small little window of three to four hours, maybe max. That's the most I ever worked in one day when I was traveling. Uh, like you're hyper-focused and you're just getting it done. You're not wasting time on the phone. You're talking to people, getting right to the point. Um, you're, you're delegating a lot of things to your team. And I just found I was more efficient than ever. I got more done during those small little three, four hour windows when I'm traveling abroad than I do at home in eight, in eight hours, you know? So yeah. it, all you need is that, all you need is that phone. And, and, and if you, if you have, if you have the opportunity, anybody listening to this, um, you know, you're not tied down with commitments at home in terms of like, now, the older my kids get, the harder it is to travel because they have so many commitments with sports and music and, and stuff like that. So it's harder to travel now, but do as much as you can now while your kids are young or before you're married, be, because it's going to get harder to do it. But like, it's a great life. Yeah. Yeah. It's a great life doing something you love 
being richly rewarded for it, helping people. Yeah. Uh, buying, selling, investing, whatever. I mean, it's so, I'm never going to, are you ever, here, let me ask you a question. As you know, my answer, are you ever going to retire? Really just magic number and say, I'm going to just stop everything. Probably not. You know, I'm probably not going to retire. Because I'm uh, older than you. I'm older than you. And I could have retired a long time ago. Claudia and I are fairly conservative people financially. Um, you know, we're debt free, mortgage free. We have good health care. We have savings. And my kids' college is paid for. You'll find that out very soon, by the way. <laughs> um, and uh, the thing is, I love doing this. I love being busy, helping people. I love the interaction, the training. Uh, doing my own deals still, you know, it, it's actually, can I say the word? Can it, it's still fun. Yeah. You know, what's better than talking with somebody and finding a solution that nobody else could. And it, it, it results in profitability. It, it solves their problem, but you made some honest money off the sweat off your own brow. Oh, I yeah. mean, that's, that's a satisfaction there. I don't think I'd get, I'm doing exactly what I should be doing right now. You know, well, what would you, you be doing if you thought? weren't doing what you're doing? Okay, once more, I'm sorry. What would you be doing if you weren't doing this right now? If you did quote unquote retire, what would you be doing? I'd be practicing law. Uh, oh, if I was retired or doing some other job. No, if you were retired, what would you be doing? I'd be bored to death. Uh, I, I don't know. I don't know what I'd be. I mean, I go, I'm up here in Colorado. I go skiing every day for an hour, two hours, three, depending conditions. I, I love to go trail running every day. I run every day for miles. Um, but I love coming back to my desk. I have phone calls. I have interactions. I use Zoom for making offers and things like that. Um, I don't know what I'd be doing. I'd be bored. I'm not going to, what am I going to do? Play golf and watch TV all day? You know, I'm looking at your YouTube channel. You are still at it, Claude. You have in the last month, you've done at least 30, 40 videos. looks like here, yeah. 20, 30. I did an hour and 10 minute one today. It was, I thought it was one of the best ones I've done. It was a group training uh, with uh, five of my students. And the, the topic was uh, really about our attitude about the business our attitude about our sales and marketing. What do we want people to perceive about us? Do we want to sound like everyone else or do we want to sound completely different, have a fresh approach to people so that they want to do, they like us, they trust us, they want to do business with us. I believe in the moth to the flame, uh, virtual attraction marketing, which you do so well with your great podcast. I mean, uh, your podcast, do you ever talk? I mean, that podcast, you must have, tens of thousands of followers on that now and i'm sure they call you up with deals or buy products and services from you all the time <laughs> yeah uh claude claude has a video here titled can you sell me a belly button lint remover <laughs> <laughs> sell me this koala bear <laughs> uh well yeah it's just I, I i wish i would have listened to you when i first heard you talk about this a long time ago you've been talking about this for years before youtube was really popular and everybody was doing it like you were putting consistent content out there and here's the thing guys you don't have to i mean um you don't have to have a huge audience you don't have to have huge lists right you don't have to be um i was just talking to a guy who does coaching the other day and he does he only has two or three thousand subscribers to his youtube channel but he so delivers he really good consistent uh content right and he gets at least 20 applications for his coaching program a week. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So it's just about consistency. It's about being genuine, being available, not hiding behind fancy funnels, you know, and, and sales pages and products, just being available, putting your phone number. Do you still give people your phone number, Claude? 970-281-5151. It rings, it, it's a, it rings right to my private cell phone here. It's a Google voice. Um, I answer phone call. I had a guy yesterday call me. Um, I, have a, I have a new package um, that I'm coming out with on April 1st. Uh, this is not a commercial. Don't worry. Um, it's on phone fear. Number one problem people come to me about is the, uh, the phone. The phone is like a cactus. And I, I did a little, I do Monday group training. And, and it, it, I, that was the title, how to deal with phone fear. And the, the result, the, 
the immediate response from everybody was overwhelming. Um, so I said, let me make a package. And I put that out there and I, uh, for $99 uh, until next week, and then it goes up. But so many people called me, ordered online and everything. And uh, one guy called me um, the other day for just a little 99 package. And we talked and I said, well, why do you think you even need this package? I didn't give him a sales spiel. I said, he says, well, I'm in insurance. He says, and sometimes I just get so much rejection and everything I get. He said, I, I almost have depression. And I said, you know, we all have that. We all get that. I said, so this might help you. And we talked some more and he ended up buying my largest package. And I wasn't in a salesy mood to try to convert him or anything. I mean, I love it. But he made the decision himself because I took the time to speak with him and he saw the value. So how can I, how do you get somebody who goes from a $99 package to a $3,500 package who eventually might become a mentoring client or bring me deals or we'll do joint venture together or something? You know how wonderful that is to have people warm calls or people call me through the content and the quality of, of consistent contemporary marketing. That was a mouthful. <laughs> yeah. Well, this is so good because don't think like you have to do what Claude and I are talking about to sell we're coaching. Cra we're crazy people. We love this business too well, much. You know? well, I was going to say like <laughs> you could do this stuff to sell deals, to buy deals. Like if I were to start from scratch, one of the things I would do is I would start a local U a YouTube channel for St. Louis investment deals, right? Mm -hmm. And I would and I would be out on Twitter. I almost said Periscope. Who's on Periscope anymore? I don't know. I would do TikTok. It's I would. Do I think Facebook. it's gone. I I think it's almost. Uh, this is the last month for Periscope, which is a shame. I loved it. Ah. Well, I would be on you know all of the major channels and Twitter and, and YouTube, Facebook and Instagram, maybe TikTok. I don't know, but like I would be talking about every day, investment properties in St. Louis, how to buy investment properties. You know next on one day the next day would be hey do you have a property you want to sell and get rid of you know call me i can help you and let me tell you a little story of so and so that i helped you know and if you don't have a story i'm not saying make one up but get one and say look you know one of my friends the other day he helped this guy sell a house who was you know in a bad situation but every single day come out with a podcast a youtube video and just share it on instagram on facebook on youtube and say hey Listen, are you looking to buy an investment property that cash flows 300 bucks a month? Check out this property here. And you can be where you're showing your screen or maybe uh, go and do a house tour. You know, bring your phone with you and do a video walkthrough of yeah. you walking through the house and then do a video of you in front of the house saying, hey, listen, this is a deal right here if you're all interested in this. Now, you may think, oh, that's, that's a lot of work for just a video that's going to be up for a little bit. No. That stuff lasts for a long, long time. And people, it's going to be on YouTube. People are going to see one of your videos in the future. They're going to go back and see these other ones and going to say, oh, you know what? I've been thinking about getting an investment property. And uh, St. Louis sounds like a good market. Like there is so much, so many things you could be talking about. You could on your YouTube channel or podcast, you could interview local bankers, local title companies, local real estate investment club owners, other investors. And, uh, you could just enter and other realtors and property managers and contractors, you could just interview people, but be the local expert. And then this is so important, Claude, what should they put on every video and piece of content they do? Their phone number. Phone number. Yes. Oh can, I, can you share the screen with me for one second? I want to show everybody something yeah, yeah. that you Let and me... I did a while ago. You know what I'm going to show. Oh, I, I don't know, but uh, I will recognize it. I'm sure. Let me see if I can. I'm going to make you co-host. Oh, wait, I can do it. Yeah. Ah, okay. There you go. I can. Um, tell me if you remember this video, Joe. Yeah, the cold calling video. Yeah. It's in all of my courses. <laughs> can, you, can you see it? Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. Look at all the views. 54,000 views. It's amazing. 54. Look at that. And all the comments and everything. And uh yeah. That one little video that you and I did. Now I do videos every week, little videos, short videos, long videos. I put out that content. I'm a, I go, my marketing approach is I'm a secret. Nobody woke up this morning and said, gee, let me call up Joe or Claude. You know, they don't know who we are, yeah. but they, 
they wake up and they do have a problem. I try to reverse engineer things. Today, when somebody wants information or has a problem or is doing a research, where do they obviously go? To the newspaper, a magazine? What do they do? They go to YouTube which is, which, or Facebook or Twitter or Reddit or LinkedIn. LinkedIn is very good to me lately. Um, and they look for information and you got to ask yourself if somebody lives in St. Louis, like you said before, and they're looking to buy a property, sell, invest, uh, do a rent to own, do a wholesale deal. They're yeah. going to type in St. Louis wholesale. And who's and is Joe McCall going to pop up? Yes, because Joe has done the legwork there and Google's algorithms are set up to focus on local business people who have the right words, the uh, right meta tags or whatever or search terms. And they're going to, and Joe is going to pop up. Oh, this guy's got a video. He's got a podcast. He's got a web page. Let me learn more about Joe. Now they, they, they put in their email or they call you or, and now you have a warm prospect who you attracted by quality, consistent content. Yep. How much time and effort did it take to put out something like that? And does the, does the market, I mean, does the video need to be super professional and high quality? I'm, I'm Mr. Non-Slick, okay? I don't have special, once in a while I do a little background. Once in a while I'll have some fun, uh, you know, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll, talk, I'll tell a sad story and I'll pull out my boohoo tissues when someone, is, when someone has a sad story or something. Uh, Non-Slick, I'm content-based, okay? I just wanna share information. I keep it very non-commercial. I try to make it contemporary relating to today's market and economy. And um, I, I just say, hey, call me. I answer my own phone or go to my webpage, schedule a 15 minute with me. Or, and, uh, and then I, you know, nobody deserves success more than you. And I do this consistently, which is probably a lot different than, a, than most of our competition, Joe. Nobody does it consistently. That's so frustrating to me. Like, I'm going to share with you guys right now a video. Um, let me, uh, I'm going to share my screen here. Uh, this one. All right. You see my screen, Claude? Yep. You got it. Beautiful. I did a search for buy investment properties, St. Louis. I did the search in YouTube and anymore. I would say it's YouTube has always been the number two search engine in, in the world, but it's becoming closer to number one. Now, I can't tell you how many times if I'm wanting to learn how to do something or like I was, I'm, I'm doing a fantasy baseball draft tonight, right? Did I go to Google or YouTube to do a search for fantasy baseball draft strategies. Okay. I went to YouTube. I don't want to read a blog post about it. I want to see a video about it. Right. So anyway, I did a search for buy investment properties, St. Louis, and there's some good videos down here. And I was just randomly going, and this looks like a guy right here who has put some good effort into his videos. Right. I go, ah, and he's in St. Louis. This is a video specifically for St. Louis. I open up his video. The St. Louis real estate market update All right. August 2020. And I click on his channel. And uh, I thought, oh, he's got some good, you know, this is a banner. You can get somebody on fiverr.com to build a banner like this for you, right? And yeah. I click on videos and look at his views, 4,000 4, views there, uh, 14,000 views here, all right? But then he hasn't done a video for six months. What's going on? And he says right here, new videos every Thursday. No. Oh my gosh. This guy, if he would just stick with it, he could be doing so much better. Um, I mean, maybe he quit or retired or I don't know. Oh, yeah. Like, the consistency is so, so important. Let me show, can I show something? Well, let me screen? share one more thing before I leave this okay. page, though. If you're like, I don't know what to talk about. If you say like, I don't know what to talk about. Subscribe to all these channels here and just get a list and look what they talked about. You know, before you move to Indianapolis, how to get sold data now. A market update every month. Do a market update for your area. Talk about neighborhoods. Make your seller know. Um, you know, here he goes. He's doing videos about particular houses. That's something you could do. Questions to ask when buying an old house. Well, you can take the questions that he gives and then repurpose it into your own video. So there's no excuse for not knowing what to talk about. Just find other channels that are doing something what you want to do, and then just do another video of you talking about that yourself. Can I give a million dollar secret? Yeah. I'm, I'm thinking maybe I should, I never share this. I don't think I've ever shared this. I mean, right. I, honestly, 
Um, this is this. I get a lot of content. I do get a lot of content from my students from conversations, and I always write them down. Oh, this would be a good video. The best way to get popular to create popular videos is to go into YouTube and try and type how to, how mm -hmm. to wholesale, how to do a lease purchase, how to do the contract. Yeah. Uh, just type in how to. You will see the most popular topics from everyone else. Okay. And uh, the how what uh, how to uh, sell a home in St. Louis, and you'll see all it, and you just sort by the most popular, the most clicks, and you say, oh, that's good. Now you don't copy them, but you use that you use the title or the idea, and you create your own video. Yeah. Okay. And now you're using you're working from the most popular search topics that are out there. I do this all the time because there's some people that are very creative. They put out great. Oh, let me, I know about that topic. Let me talk about, uh, let me talk about that also. Let me put my spin on it, my opinion on it. Mm -hmm. Now I have, you know, so we're, that's working really smart. Uh, so the type in how to, can I show one quick thing really yeah. on the screen? Mm -hmm. here, Joe? Yeah. Let me do this. Um, this is my webpage. These are all, here's the, Here's a little video. I just did it two hours ago, 55 views mm -hmm. um, on that. Okay. Here's one, two days ago, 72 views uh, the other day, 92, 71. And then that, you know, as the week goes on 170 views and you see all the, uh, you know, here's one uh, two weeks ago, 230 views, 305, how to sell like a millionaire, the worst and really dumb phone openers, uh, scarcity and social proof, engaging a sales a stranger in a conversation, how to sell a koala bear. Okay. That didn't get a lot of views. That's probably not the, the best title I ever did um, on it, but you see all this stuff. Um, I had one in here with Tom Cruise. I don't see, Oh, there it is. Tom Cruise. I put it in the video there, you know, walk, you walk into a, to, a coffee shop and Tom Cruise sits next to you. What do you say to him? How do you engage him in a conversation? All about sales training. That's my biggie thing. Yeah. The thing about it is, and you said this earlier before, and that's that's probably the most important takeaway from this conversation. You don't need you don't need to be one of these million gazillion YouTube uh, uh, podcast uh, videographers. Uh, getting a hundred people to follow you in the next thirty days, out of that hundred people, let's say two and a half percent, five of them call you. Uh, you know they're coming to you, and here's. Another secret of my success. I like warm calls more than cold calls. Okay. I love when people come to me. Hey, I saw your video. My grandma, I just got my grandma's house out of probate. What should I do? And th that's the kind of conversations I love because that's somebody, maybe I'll do a deal. Maybe I'll make yeah. them an offer. Maybe they'll buy intellectual property. I don't know. Something, something good will come out of it, but how easy is it? when you have warm call, more warm calls than cold calls. Yeah. And yeah. I just, I just love that. So and my, the, whole, the whole point of what we're saying is you can, you need to start thinking about social media being a marketing strategy in terms of talking about what you are doing, talking about who you're helping and, and giving tips and advice and don't try to go national. You know, I would suggest really strongly looking local you know, looking at your, you, maybe it's, you want to do Colorado, you know, maybe you want to focus just on Colorado Springs, but um, if you, and I would tell anybody this, if I were, you know, if you were to start a podcast, be the more niched you can be the better, you know, Claude's not teaching personal development. He's teaching sales training, right? He's known as the sales guru, not, not um, uh, personal development. You know what I mean? The, rich, the riches are in the niches, Joe. Yeah. Yeah. The riches are in the niches. Uh, you know, it, it just works so well. And I, I have appointments every day. People, I got to return calls. People text me. People email me. They go to my webpage. They call me directly sometimes. How much, how much do I love that? Uh, when I, warm calls to me are just, uh, that, that's my focus. And that, I get that through that kind of social media attraction marketing. And it just works. And all I'm doing is sharing information. And 
you know, sometimes I even talk about my mistakes. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you about, you know, Mr. Genius here. Let me tell you about the dumb thing I just did. <laughs> and, and people love that honesty and that they love that yeah. kind of information. Very good. Um, and, 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 then they, and then they feel like they know you and then they, they contact you and just give me three, four, five good adult to adult conversations every day. And, you know, I work with my wife, you work with your lovely lady. Um, that's all I need to make my business work very well, to have a great lifestyle. Yeah. Do you mind if we uh, open it up for a few questions here, Glad? Absolutely. Can I share one other thing? Yeah. This is the, I, I left this out. Uh, I've been doing this so long uh, that now I get a, uh, guess how much all this marketing and YouTube cost me, by the way? Oh, uh, zero. Zero. Here's the best part. In fact, Claudia just told me this yesterday. Uh, she said, we just got, we just got a couple hundred dollars from, uh, from Google. I said, yeah, Google every month sends money automatically to my bank because of the clicks on my, on my, on my YouTube videos. I actually get paid from Google, AKA YouTube while I'm generating leads and getting clients and getting deals and they're paying me. Yeah. I think, I think that's a good way to do business. <laughs> I agree. All right. I agree. Um, so guys, we have Claude here just for a few more minutes. If you have a question for Claude, uh, please type it in the chat right now. And um, a couple of people submitted some questions here and I'm going to answer them. Uh, this is from Mike. I work alone and I have $2,000 to spend this month on my marketing. How would you spread the money? PPC AdWords, Facebook, outsource telemarketing, direct mail. Why? Thank you. So how about, do you want to answer that first, Claude? What, if somebody had two grand and they wanted to spend it on marketing, what would you say? Um, good. First thing, good equipment. Get a good microphone. Get Get the fastest Wi-Fi you can for your area. Get a decent laptop. Okay, get good equipment. See how good Joe looks over there? You know, you wouldn't know he's 34 years old. Okay. I'm over 34. I know. Not much. No, <laughs> yeah. Don't ask my don't ask my age. Okay. I'm I'm in I'm in competition well, that's, with that's a good distinction, you know, because there's what we're talking about, this social um, um, attraction yeah, marketing. Attraction attraction marketing is, is a long-term play, right? You're going to see the results and the fruit, maybe not for three to six months of you doing it consistently. It's got to be, you got to be in it for the long haul. So this is a long-term play. Um, you know, so if you needed immediate leads, like you wanted to do a deal now, I don't know if spending your money on PPC, AdWords, Facebook is probably a good idea. Um, I would suggest, you know, I would suggest just picking up the phone and calling people, you know, yeah. uh, find rentals on, on Zillow, um, call for sale by owners. I was going to share with you guys a resource that uh, I, I, I've been looking into lately about getting, this is a website and I'll just share it right now. It's called myplusleads.com. Oh, myplusleads.com. I'm going to put this in the Zoom chat for everybody. And I'll share my screen. I mean, I might spend some of that two grand on subscribing to something like this. Um, and make sure you have a phone if you don't have one already. And what it does is it gives you, if I scroll down, it gives you expired leads for sale by owner leads and for rent by owner leads and pre-foreclosure if you want. But what it does is it, um, if any house is listed for sale by owner on any of the websites, or if it's an expired listing, or if it's a rental, if it's a landlord that's been listed, this company will pull that stuff, put it into a spreadsheet, and will give you the name and phone numbers of the owners of those properties. And um, I would just call them up. Yeah. You know, you could call the expired listings. I was just interviewing a guy yesterday who asks this great question when he calls people or this is a text. He sends this text to people. It says, are you still looking to sell if you got the price you wanted for your property? And that's, that's a great leading text. You could send text messages or just call these people. Um, if you needed some leads fast, you're not, you don't maybe have much time to wait for people to call you. 
you might need to do some of the outbound calling, but there's a way you can do it where if you're sending a text or just asking them a question saying, Hey, I saw your, I saw you had a property that um, was for sale. Um, I'm looking to buy, my wife and I are looking to buy a property in the area. Is it still available? Can you tell me yeah. a little bit about it? Start asking questions to them and then you can turn that cold call into a warm call by asking questions, right? Exactly. Ask good questions and, you know, go on to Craigslist, go on to Zillow, contact some local realtors, say, hey, do you have a property of anybody who's really who wants to oh, yeah. close oh, yeah. today, wants to sell it today? Um, oh my gosh. You know, Check this out. Red you Finn. can go into market like St. Louis. I'm going to remove outline. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. I love Zillow. Well, th yeah, this is Redfin though. I'm sorry. Did I say Zillow? Okay. Redfin, Trulia, uh, yep. Zillow. These are, and you can target market zip codes. You can do for sale by owner, for rent by owner. You can do it through Realtor. I mean, these are great tools for free. Yep. So here I am. I'm looking for all of these. I'm going to remove new construction. There are 425 homes right now in the St. Louis area. Let me zoom in a little bit. Wow. That have 287. Look at this beautiful house here that have been on the market over 60 days in St. Louis right now, right? Over 60 days. Let's do over 90 days. 208. Why hasn't this beautiful house sold yet? Well, it's overpriced, but it's on. It's, it looks oh, like it's a bomb located. shelter. It looks like a bomb shelter. Yeah. All right. This is a town home. That's I thought I did houses only, but here's a great house. 85 grand. Right. Why don't you just go wow. through these? Here's a house in Granite City for sale by owner. There's a reason why this house hasn't sold yet. Call up the owners or the realtors and say, hey, this looks like a nice house. You know, I'm an investor looking to buy a property in the area. Can you tell me a little bit, a little bit about it? I'd um, like to make an I'd like to make an offer today, but I need some more information. Can you help me? Yeah, great. I always say that I'd like to make an offer today. What do you mm. think that does to somebody, realtor or owner, when you say I'm ready to make an offer today? Do you think I, you capture their attention? We're in the business of capturing attention, aren't we? Oh yeah. So what was the thing you asked after that? Can I ask you a few questions before I make the offer so I can, can I get a little bit more information before I make my offer? Yeah. I'll ask you a few questions, sir. You ask me a few, I'll make you an offer and we can discuss it or you can tell me to get lost. You don't have to say you'll think about it or call you later or something like that. I'm, I'm looking for a home today, sir. Are you, are you the owner, by the way, Mr. McCall? No, I'm the, I'm the listing agent. Oh, Okay. Um, can, any background you can give me on this property? Uh, is it vacant or is it occupied? It's a well, beautiful yeah. home. Why, why are they even selling it? Um, well, it was just, you know, it's a, it's a, a house in the family that, um, you know, they wanted to sell and they, they, uh, they just put it on the market. I was amazed. How, uh, I was amazed it's been on the market 90 days. I, that home should have sold in the New York minute. What's the issue here? If you don't mind me asking. Well, you know, it's uh, it's it's not in the best area. You know, it doesn't have a driveway. Um, it's kind of graveled, uh, gravel driveway. Um, and you know, it's it's just, uh, you know, I don't know to be honest. I was I'm kind of surprised. I thought it would have sold by now. And it's only a two bedroom. Okay. Um, are we talking about pr now? Here's my favorite line. Are we can we are we talking about price or terms on this house to do a deal today? Well, um, you know, they just want to sell it. You know, my clients just want to, they want to get rid of it. Okay. I like the house. I like a Revere Drive. Nice home and everything. I like that. Is it, it isn't free and clear, right? Is there still a mortgage on it? Um, I don't know. Why, why, why do you ask? That's a great question. Because if I know there's a mortgage on it, I can either assume that mortgage or I can make a terms offer and get, offer full price on the property. You see, the more information I have, the more I can negotiate or find a solution and make an offer today. That's before I spend $63,000. I like to know a lot about a property. Am I wrong? Uh, you know, no, why don't you just come by and look at it and just make an offer. 
Uh, you know what? That's a great idea. Thank you for bringing that up. I'm pretty busy right now. My wife's pregnant and expecting. Honey, you're pregnant again. Yeah, right. Uh, um, <laughs> you don't. You don't have, Mister Mister Realtor. You don't have a. You don't have an iPhone, do you? Uh huh. Or an, yeah. Or an Android. Could Could you do me a favor? Because I want to make a serious offer today. Could you drive to that property and turn on Skype or or FaceTime or or zoom and give me a little tour. You wouldn't mind doing that. So we could do, so we could do a deal today and you could make a nice commission. Well, uh, you know, I, I guess I would do it if you're serious about buying it, but, um, but do it, did it, I, is anything I've said led you to believe I'm not serious? Um, no, but uh, have you seen the pictures yeah. online yet? Um, yeah, they're good, but they don't really give me a feel for the house and everything. That's why I like off the role play. Yeah. Now, you know, in the old days, what did we used to do before COVID and everything else? What did we we'd get in our car? We'd always drive around. Right. We'd yeah. always go to the properties. People would sh wouldn't show up. They show up late. We couldn't get inside. The neighbor wasn't there with the key. What I do to, millionaire thinking in this business is about using your time wisely. Who should who should go to the property and give us a nice little video tour? Me or Mr. Oh, realtor? The realtor. Yeah. I make the realtor run around. I don't get, I don't leave my house unless I'm going to pick up a check or a contract. I don't have the time. Yeah. Well, you I, know, I've I often said, a, go ahead. I've often said too, it's sometimes it's better if you're doing these virtual, these deals virtually from another state, because then you have a good excuse to yeah. why you can't go out there. Right. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, here's the thing. I did an analysis in the old days when I first got started, I used to get in my car, drive in traffic, go drive to meetings and all that stuff all the time. And at, out of all that time spent, how many of that, how much of all that driving and mileage and, and meetings and how many of, how much of that actually resulted in a deal? Mm. It was very small. Yeah. Now I work from home. I talk to people all day long. I get people to send me pictures um, or give me a video tour on the property. I get them to do the running around yeah. instead yeah. of me. Can I see, can I talk to more people, look at more properties and you know, you, you get them to say, hey, show me the basement, show me where the hot water heater, show me the garage mm -hmm. and everything. And you, you, you can hit the record button and even analyze it later. Ooh, that, that hot water heater has a lot of rust on it and everything like that, or the stains on the ceiling. You can do this with a, you can do this today without getting in your car. And we're yep. social. Before we were even socially distant, I wanted to make the best use of my time. Well, this is so good. And, and the reason I brought up this Redfin here is because you guys have, you don't have any excuse of why you can't talk to five people. And before I start, would suggest spending a bunch of money on marketing, uh, like direct mail or Google ads. You know, I would start looking at Zillow. I would start going through here and calling every rental that you can get um yeah. let, let me see rentals are rentals are wonderful um hi joe that property must be rented by now right um no which one are you talking about uh the one on avocado lane oh no it's uh still available why don't you go look oh, at wow. it uh, you know what thank you i did i looked at it right now on the online on zillow and everything it's a beautiful let me ask you something this is your home uh, joe or are you the realtor? I, I'm the listing agent, the leasing agent. Oh, you're the li you're the listing agent. If I want to, I'm really looking for a home I could rent. Uh, I'm looking for an investment property that I can rent for a year or two and then uh, participate in the purchase. That isn't anything we could do on a home like this, right? Uh, you know, I kind of doubt it. This the client who owns this house. They, you know, they own a couple other hundred homes. Okay, so they wouldn't consider an offer to purchase this uh, with with a rental first for one to thirty six months, right? Uh, you know, I don't know. Um, can, we, can we find out? Could I submit a letter of intent to you today? And can you get back to me by four thirty? Sure. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Bam. There offers. you go. Offers right away. Don't waste time. Just go for it. And I know your guys know about, I love using these letters of intent with a little video embedded in the uh, email. Uh, yeah. I, I love just a short offer. Uh, I might have a price offer. I might have a terms offer, a lease purchase offer, multiple offers takes me 60 seconds to put it together. And I, and I zip it out to them, but I also set a time frame for the response. Mm -hmm. Oh, so guys, Every one of these rental ads has a phone number right here. 
Just call it. Who it doesn't matter if it's an agent, a property management company, something like Marketplace Homes. Call that number. You know, you might go to voicemail, pretend you're a tenant interested in the property, get somebody on the phone and talk to them. And the cool thing about these guys is they have other clients who have properties that they might want to sell. Right. If this house, the owner doesn't want to sell this one, ask them if they have any other clients with other homes that they're looking to sell. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's, there's so much opportunity out there. Okay. So uh, let's see if there's been any new questions. You can go Claude, if you want. Um, uh, people are asking me if I've used my plus leads before and I have not, but I've heard good things about them. Um, what do you use to send video uh, in your emails, Claude? You're going to laugh at this. I use Zoom. You know why? Uh -uh. Zoom, Zoom has, um, I think Zoom has, if you really get into Zoom, as we've all been doing the last 13 months, Zoom has in the preferences or the settings, the fine-tuned settings, they even have video, they have uh, what you, uh, video enhancements. They make the video smoother and, yeah. and everything. Uh, you can add background to it um all that and when you do a, v a zoom video it converts it to a mp3 mp4 or MP4, whatever it's called yeah, the, yeah. which is a nice universal video and they give you an audio so i do the video i'll do a 30 60 second video and uh, and then it converts it and then i hit the share button the little arrow that goes up and it automatically puts them both into an email for me and i send really? that personalized email right away uh, to somebody. And it's just that easy to do. You know, so I don't using... use bomb bomb or any of the others. I like, I like to make, I, I want to make these fast because I do a lot of them every day. Oh, that's great. Yeah. So okay. uh, I use uh, zoom is just great for uh, correspondence with a little short and it keep your video short and always put your contact information in it, either in the bottom signature or inside the video. And uh, I might attach a simple letter of intent or maybe nothing. Maybe it wasn't that good a call. It was only a three or a four on a one through 10. Hey, Mr. McCall, what a pleasure to speak with you. I love your property. You're a great guy. I appreciate your time and information. If you change your mind, my phone number is um, one, two, three. Would you get back to me? And uh, I'd, I'm, I'd still like to make an, another offer on your property if things don't go the way you planned. Uh, you're a great guy. Thanks a lot. Bye bye. You know, just thank you. Sometimes just getting people, I'm a real psycho babbler. I love Dr. Robert Cialdini and the different psychological triggers. You know, what's the number one reason why people do business with me? Because they know, like, and trust you. So that's yeah. three. How simple. And do we really work at that in our marketing and our follow-up? Follow-up is so important. Yeah. People change their minds all the time, don't they? Yeah. You might have a phone call. Well, we don't want to do that. We just want all cash. We have a realtor. Fine, fine. You know, there's it, nothing there. Oh, well, I repeat that. If, if nothing changes, I'm going to send them that follow up. I might attach a contract, a letter of intent, just my contact information. People hang on to that. Claudia, what was the one guy contacted us? How many years later? I don't know. Like 24 or something. 20, 24 years later, people hang on to stuff. You know, it's crazy. <laughs> Yeah. They, they just hang on to stuff. We've had people years later when, oh, is that offer still good? What offer, sir? <laughs> I make more than one. Yeah, yeah. So I, a follow-up is really good, Joe. Hey, listen, if, um, thank you for having yes. me on here today. I, what a great surprise. This has been very good. And um, let me just make sure. Somebody's asking here, uh, where do you get your letters of intent? Um, um, just send me an email. I'll say, I got a whole file of them. Of, I got like 30, 40 samples of different letters of intent. Is that all right, Joe? Can I give my email yeah. out or something? I'm going to put um, it, go ahead and give it. And I'm going to type it in here in the chat too. Um, mentor at Mac. And I have a whole file, uh, in my Dropbox. I'll be glad to send it to you. And, um, mentor and what's your phone number com. again, Claude? Uh, 970 281 Five one five one, or they can go to my webpage, cluddiamond.com. There's a little contact button. Send me a message. It says I love Joe and I want letter L O I letters of intent. If you put, you got to put in I love Joe though. Uh, and so again, um, I'll send that. I'll send that to you guys for free. Mentor uh, at letter, 
Mentor at Mac.com. M-E-N-T-O-R. I can type it in too. And a phone number is 970-281-5151. You got it. Or ClaudeDiamond.com. Yeah. And, nice. Um, yeah, I love giving stuff away. That is, there's a marketing question. Should we use incentives like you and I just did? Should we give stuff away? What's the purpose of giving stuff away? We're businessmen. We're entrepreneurs. We're supposed to charge for everything, right? Why do we have to create incentives in our marketing plan? It just gives an incentive for people to reach out, you know, to, to, yeah. to get their email, to get their phone number, to get the warm lead. Yeah. It, yeah. I, my, reciprocity. My attitude, yeah. Reciprocity. Thank you, Jules. Exactly. Give people something, introduce yourself to them, gain credibility, likability, and trust, like you just said. And that, that's a building block. It's like a house. You got to build a foundation first. If you just go to people, hi, I'm Mr. Guru. Look at me standing in front of my jet here. Just give me your money. Just trust me. That, that doesn't work today. That It really doesn't. You've got to earn people's trust and respect. We're in a different, it's, we're in a different culture today where you can't take a good prospect for granted. Yep. you got Great. to well, Thank it. you, Claude. And say hi to thank Claudia you, sir. for us too. Hey, Joe. Hi, Claudia. <laughs> hey, Claudia, Hello. give that guy a haircut. Nah, he looks good. He looks good. <laughs> All right. Someday. We'll see. Someday. Yeah, Take okay. care, Joe. <laughs> yeah, Claudia. Bye, Claude. Bye. <laughs> All right. Cool, guys. Um. Somebody's asking for that lead gen I put in earlier. It's myplusleads.com. Is that what you're talking about? Um, that lead gen piece that I gave you before was myplusleads.com. All right, so there's been some questions that were asked here. I want to go through that real quick. A lot of great feedback on the call, the call with Claude. That's really cool. Uh, Claude, some questions about his personalized video. Um, there's a few tools that you can use, but he just uses Zoom. He opens up, you can get a free Zoom account, record yourself, do a short little